Okay, let me switch. I have the the honor to to wrap up today's uh, meeting. We've heard really interesting talks from all the participants. Uh, for me, as a host here in Macedonia, it's a great pleasure to have Professor Yi and uh, Daniel here. I hope uh, next time uh, a larger part of the team will be able to come and uh, we'll have uh, some fun in addition to working so hard. Um, okay, so um, my my job in the Evoke Learn project was more of a support job, so I was uh, uh, mainly focusing on working with uh, with uh, the data and uh, working with the ASR models. And uh, I was also contributing to the code base that, uh, that uh, was used for all the experiments and all the results we've, uh, we've heard uh, so far. Um, so in, the, in my presentation, I will give you a bit of a, bit of a background uh, of the ASR, ASR tools that we developed uh, for the EvoClearn project. Um, so automatic speech recognition um, is uh, the process of recognition of, of speech and its conversion to text. Uh, it's why it's often called speech, uh, speech to text, uh, kind of in contrast to text to speech systems which synthesize speech. Uh, it's been a field of research for more than 60 years, so it's uh, quite a mature field, uh, let's say. And uh, so, uh, so much that uh, ASR has uh, really penetrated the technology we regularly, regularly use today. Uh, it's one of the key enablers of virtual assistants, uh, such as the, the open source Mycroft, uh, as well as the famous uh, commercial ones, uh, Google Assistant, Siri, Alexa, Cortana, and the rest. <clears throat> So uh, I'll get back to the, the beginnings, uh, why we originally uh, were motivated to, to implement some ASR models and uh, integrate them in the Evoke Learn uh, simulation of uh, vocal learning in uh, early childhood or in infants. And this was because uh, we, we had uh, only the acoustic error to start with, and we wanted to augment it with uh, with a with a speech recognition error, so kind of a phone recognition error. Uh, but in fact, after all, all the experiments and the, the results came in, we saw that ASR can, uh, can be used as a standalone guide for early vocal learning. So you don't really need the, the acoustic error um, that we originally had to, to guide the, the process. But uh, also, in fact, we, we saw, uh, and you saw today in, in the presentations of, of uh, my colleagues, that uh, ASR is superior to using acoustic error in this process because uh, it leads to better quality um, optimization, so uh, learning, uh, and uh, it alleviates the speaker normalization problem, which, uh, which, which is a big, big problem in um, um, in the in the area, um, so we built uh, different ASR models. Uh, we started off with a Caldi Open Vocabulary system, uh, and from that we then developed our custom models, uh, which were based on deep learning, and uh, we were focusing on syllable recognition. So we did uh, vowel recognition, consonant vowel recognition, consonant vowel consonant, and uh, as well as consonant, consonant, vowel, uh, so consonant cluster vowel uh, recognition. Um, Caldi is a state-of-the-art ASR system, which uh, is not only used in academia, but is also commercially used in industry. It uh, uses um, different technologies, uh, which still, uh, even with the, even with the huge proliferation of deep learning frameworks and end-to-end speech recognition systems still holds its ground uh, in uh, in this area uh, offering uh, really really uh, good results um, and uh, this is the reason why it's why it's uh, still commonly used uh, as uh, not only in research but also in, in industry um, so we trained the Caldi ASR model using the libre speech open speech database um, this is a uh, consists of about a thousand hours of red English speech 
um, which was extracted from audiobooks from the LibriVox project. It was prepared by Vasil Paneutov and um, with the assistance of Daniel Povey, which also led to the development of Kaudi. <clears throat> so uh, how we use the system is uh, we fed uh, VTL synthesized CVC words and scored them using Kaldi. So it's kind of an open vocabulary um, evaluation of, of the synthesized data. So this thing is a bit small, but generally the, the higher the score, the, the more blue the color, and the yellow scores are uh, the, the lowest scores. Um, I'll focus only on the left part, which is, uh, which is the words that we put into the system. Um, so on the y-axis, you have the, the inputs, so the true, true, true words, true classes, ground true. Uh, so these are the words bad, bad, bead, bid, and also uh, that, dead, deed, and god and good. Um, and we can see that uh, Kaldi, uh, so the synthesis was uh, good enough so that Kaldi kind of uh, recognized the correct words. So you, you see kind of a, a good diagonal here. Uh, you can see my mouse, right? Okay, so you see kind of a good diagonal here with some um, parallel diagonals, which are basically um, mistakes uh, in the onsets. So you have bed and here you have dead. So the vowel and the coda are uh, recognized correctly, but the onset is, is a bit problematic for, for Kaldi. Um, and also uh, on the right, so this is a question mark for uh, um, unrecognized data, basically. On the right, we also have other candidate words that were uh, found to be close to the, to the input by Kaldi. So this was kind of a way to simulate listening experiments in an open vocabulary task. And uh, it was a good proxy for, for these uh, and allowed a quick, uh, quick check of, of, um, of the optimization quality. Um, so from, from these results, we, uh, we took, took apart the, the different uh, constituents of the CVC syllables. And uh, we could kind of evaluate also how well the, the nucleus, so the vowel was recognized. And here we also see kind of a good diagonal in the middle. So the blue one is a, is a good recognition score. Uh, but also we see some, uh, some errors in, 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 uh, in detection. And uh, we can also do this for the onsets here in the top and the codas. Uh, there's only one coda in all of these words is uh, D. So uh, if we zoom in here, we can see that uh, from the onsets, uh, the B was most successfully recognized by Kaldi pointing to maybe our optimization working the best for, for uh, this uh, B-label. Um, for D is also not so bad, but for G is, uh, it's a bit worse than, than the rest. Um, and for the, for the coda, we see it's mostly well recognized, but uh, there is some confusion, let's say, with uh, LD and T. Okay, um, uh, the interesting, um, interesting uh, thing to note here is that this does correlate well with uh, listening results. So this is uh, from uh, Daniel's paper on the, on the CVC um, optimization. And we can see, for example, here that uh, bad is kind of uh, well recognized and here also bad is well recognized. Uh, but then B is a bit worse and you see B is here. So it's yellow, so it kind of confirms the, the listening test results. And if we go to BOD, for example, which is one of the worst, BOD and BUD. So BOD is not recognized at all, and uh, BUD is also uh, not well recognized. So there is a correlation between, uh, so this kind of confirms the, the starting motivation to use it as a proxy to listening experiments. <clears throat> okay, um, so, uh, from there, we went on to develop uh, our own models. So we built uh, deep learning based models, uh, a total of 11 of them. I just counted them for this presentation to experiment. Uh, and from them, we kind of refined our uh, architecture to, to two models that, uh, that we found to, to work well. Um, to, to train these models, we needed a, a CV a CVC CCV dataset, and uh, we had Timit, 
uh, it's here in the in the bottom row of this table. But the problem with Timit is that um, if uh, if we just take the the CVs we're interested in, uh, it's it's too short. So it's only eight minutes. Um, so what we did is we uh, we took uh, libre speech training data and uh, validation and testing data, and uh, used the Caldi alignments. So this trained Caldi system that we uh, developed, we used it to to align the, the transcriptions, and uh, then we extracted basically from these alignments um, data sets for the different syllable structures. Uh, here uh, we show the different. Uh, CV data sets that we extracted. At the end, we used the clean uh, CV. So clean is uh, the part of the libre speech which has uh, no no noisy, so it's little, uh, the least noisy of the, of the data. And uh, this amounts to 15 hours of training data and about two hours of validation and testing data. Um, okay, so these are the the three models that uh, that we kind of uh, used more extensively. The first one we only used for vowel recognition because uh, it's it's not a temporal model, so it doesn't uh, take temporal dynamics into account. It just uses a static a feature vector, and we only used it for vowel recognition. Um, it consists of nine dense layers, so fully connected layers of neurons. Um, then we had a baseline LST model. Uh, this was originally suggested by Daniel, and uh, I optimized it a bit. Uh, so the final architecture of this model is uh, two bidirectional LSTM layers, which are recurrent neural networks, and six dense fully connected layers. And we also went all out, so we wanted to, to get the best results we could. And this uh, we ended up with a pretty complex uh, CNN LSTM model. So very complex. Okay, everything is relative. Uh, it's not as complex as the... Is uh, Alexa or the image recognition models, but um, uh, it's quite complex. So it has eight convolutional layers. Um, it has six LSTM layers and it has uh, three dense layers. Um, here's a plot of the model just to, to get a feel of what's what's uh, going on in the this most uh, advanced models. So most com complex model. So we have a kind of a multi-input convolutional network uh, consisting of uh, uh, three CNNs, which have a different kernel size. So one is more temporal, uh, actually more, uh, more frequency uh, oriented. So it's a vertical kernel. Then it's a horizontal kernel, so more temporal dynamic, dynamic oriented. And one, uh, one spectro temporal, let's say, uh, kernel. And this goes on to uh, an additional five convolutional uh, layers, which uh, with decreasing uh, kernel size, but increasing uh, filter number. And then we go on to the recurrent part, which is uh, uh, LSTM. Um, it's uh, six LSTM layers with decreasing uh, cell size, uh, ending with a 64 cell size. And then we have a kind of a classifier out of uh, three dense networks. So this outputs the, the probabilities for the, this is a CVC probability, basically onset vowel and coda. Um, okay, so uh, I'll briefly go over results. I don't want to uh, take too much time. So um, this is uh, the vowel recognition part. So the vowel set uh, has uh, about nine hours of training data and about an hour and uh, this is a fifth of 60. So what is it, 12 minutes? Um, an hour and 12 minutes of uh, validation and testing data. And uh, here's the DNN model. So the this kind of a static model, it doesn't take the dynamics of the formants or the spectrum in, into account. Um, we, also, uh, we use the metal spectrogram for as input features. So this is uh, something I wanted to mention. Um, and uh, you see that the main diagonal is not really well, uh, well, it doesn't pop up really well. There's quite some mixture between uh, some of the diphthongs here, uh, but also uh, between the, the other sounds. Um, if we take the, the baseline LSTM model, so the base LSTM model, we already see a large improvement. So if we go back and uh, see the 
the accuracy here. So it's 50% overall accuracy. And for the LSTM model, it's already 73%. The, there is some mixing, but uh, it's it's quite better, much better than the DNN model. With the very advanced model, we do get an improvement, but uh, comparing to the previous slide, so it's only a 3%, let's say, improvement, three and something. Um, and you can kind of see it in the confusion matrix. That it doesn't change too much. Um, this is a plot uh, that we experimented with uh, uh, wanting to, to show the error surface in the, in the uh, formant, uh, F1, F2 um, uh, space. And uh, this is uh, the base LSTM model. Um, and we can see that, uh, so these are the five targets, uh, A, this is um, O and U, and here A and E. And uh, if we want to shoot for A, we see that the error surface is not really focused around A, but uh, the, the minimum error is kind of near, say near to the target uh, formant uh, placement. For A, it's a bit better, so it's very near the A. For E, is also close for O is also close and for U is kind of in the right right quadrant let's say um, okay so CV recognition we had a data of uh, 13 hours uh, almost two hours of validation and test data uh, this is uh, the performance by the base LSTM model so it only uh, confuses uh, je with j but uh, the rest of the results are, are quite good. Um, and uh, this is the CNN model, so the more advanced model. We see that, again, the je is confused with the je. Uh, not with the je, now it's with, confused with silence, but um, je was not so much in the training data, so this kind of uh, explains why uh, the, the, source of conf the source of confusion. Uh, this was not a hindrance for us because we didn't use uh, je as an onset. So we could uh, use successfully these models for optimizing our uh, learning process, optimizing our targets. Mm. OK, and this is the vowels. So for the base LSTM model, we have a, a strong diagonal as well. For the CNN model, we also have kind of a good diagonal. Um, uh, for the CVC recognition, we had a larger data set, so 72 hours of data for training. And uh, what is this? Almost six hours for validation and test. Um, so the base LST model, um, this is the onset detection, basically. And uh, there's only some confusion for the R. It's confused with the W. This is the R, maybe it's similar in, in American English. And um, this is the, the vowels. So there was no OI. Uh, unstressed OE. So as you see here, we have kind of a full set of uh, vowels, unstressed and stressed. And here, uh, the diagonal is not so strong, but it's not that bad also, because most of these uh, confusions are from uh, the presence or absence of stress. So uh, as you know, some vowels don't really change uh, acoustically if they're stressed or not. But if, for example, we have here uh, A, which goes to schwa, basically to a, and here we have kind of a good, uh, good uh, diagonal between these two. So um, overall, uh, the results are satisfactory, and this is the coda results. The coda results are good. There's not too much uh, confusion. Maybe ung is confused with n, um, as you see here, but uh, the rest there is an m and n are a bit confused here. But not, uh, nothing, nothing really, um, uh, but nothing that would preclude the use of the model. Uh, uh, this is the CCV set. So we experiment with different CCV sets, um, and I can show you the results. Uh, the time is almost done, so the I will just show you the base LSTM uh, results for the CVC, uh, CCV uh, consonant cluster, ba basically symbol recognition. So here we have the initial consonant of the cluster. The overall results is 98%, uh, so it's, uh, it's very good results. 
um, only V has been uh, confused with B, but uh, there was only two in the test set and probably also not so many in the training set. So V wasn't appearing as a initial consonant in the consonant cluster, basically. Um, this is the um, this is the CNN results. So if I go between them, uh -huh. so the CNN does recognize the N better, but it's only two samples, so it's not nothing scary. Um, uh, otherwise, the diagonal is strong, and um, this is the second consonant. Uh, so again, we see good result. Uh, Z is confused with S, which uh, in their their uh, voice unvoiced pair, so it's not nothing uh, detrimental. And uh, if we compare CNN and base LSTM, there is not much difference. So if we see the percentage of, uh, of error, it goes from 77 to 78. So um, why I'm accenting this is that uh, the vowels are okay. I'm accenting this because, um, ah, it's even lower overall, okay. Um, so uh, the performance is very close, which led us to uh, finally use the base LST model in our experiments because it was way faster uh, since it's way simpler. And um, all the improvements here, uh, even showing that it's not as good as the base LST model, um, basically told us that um, we can get away with a simpler model. Okay, so that uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm on time.